Okay, make sure you can fill out a chart like this graph. So this would be consistent. It has a solution. Consistent. It has a solution. And inconsistent. It doesn't have a solution. And then this one is independent. And this is dependent. And this is neither independent or dependent, this type of solution. So solve by graphing, what you want to do is you want to, um, you could find x and y intercepts if they're in standard form like this, or you could solve for y, and you, what you're trying to do is you're going to graph, graph, make a line and see where they intersect. So this is going to be x is negative 2 and y is 3 so for my x and y intercepts, so x is negative 2, y is 3. So I'm going up 3 over 2, up 3 over 2, and then my other line is x is negative 2 and y is negative 1. So where they cross is at negative 2, 0. You want to write it as an ordered pair. And this solve by graphing is actually an inequality, so what I'm going to solve for y, so I'm going to subtract 3x and divide by negative 2, so I'm going to get y is greater than or equal to, it's going to change the sense of the inequality because you divide by a negative, um, 3 and a half, 3.5 or 7 halves, plus 3 halves x. So I'm going to start at 3 and a half and go up 3, right 2 up 3, right 2. And it's going to be a solid line. Oops. And I'm going to shade above the line. And now I'm going to graph this line. So it's going to be y is greater than 7 minus 2x. And it's going to be a dash line looks like this, dashed, and I'm going to shade above the line. So where they intersect is this red part right here. So make sure you darken your intersection. So you should be able to solve, solve a system of equations by graphing, and a system of equalities by graphing, inequalities, and also by substitution. So to substitute, what you want to do is solve for one of the variables. So in this one, I'm going to solve for x. So x equals 3 plus y. Plug x in. So it's 2 times the quantity 3 plus y minus y equals 12. So 6 plus 2y minus y equals 12. So y equals, subtract 6, 6. So if y equals 6, then x is x minus 6 equals 3, so x has to be 9, and I'm going to write it as an ordered pair. So it's going to be 9, 6. And this other one, solve by substitution, so I want to solve for y. I'm going to add 5x, sub it in right here. So it's 10x minus 2 times the quantity negative 1 plus 5x equals 2. So 10x plus 2 minus 10x equals 2. So these x's will cancel out and you get 2 equal 2. So if 2 equals 2, my variable's dropped out. This statement is true, so it's infinite solution. If it was false, it would be no solution. So if I graph this, it would be two lines that intersect. It's a dependent, consistent system. You should also be able to solve by elimination. So if I'm going to solve this equation by elimination, I can either eliminate the x's or the y's. I'm going to choose to eliminate the x's, so I'm going to multiply the top by negative 4 and the bottom by 3. This is going to make it so the top is negative 12x and the bottom is 12x, so I can add them and they're going to eliminate. So this is going to be negative 12x minus 20y 
equals negative 48. 12x minus 9y equals negative 39. So now I can add these two equations up and eliminate. So this is negative 87, so y equals 3. And now you can plug 3 back into any of these equations. So 3x plus 5 times 3 equals 12. 3x plus 15 equals 12. 3x equals negative 3, x equals negative 1. So your solution is negative 1, 3. And then over here, solve by elimination, I'm going to multiply the top by a positive 5, or a negative 5, because that's going to make the whole thing right here positive 5x, which will eliminate the x's. So I'm going to have a positive 5x plus 10y equals 45. And I can add these together, cross, cross, that's 0. And this is going to be negative 20, or positive 23. But here you have a left-hand side equals the right-hand, or doesn't equal the right-hand side. So it is no solution. No solution. These lines would never intersect. And then a word problem. Nikki spent a total of $64.00. For a pair of jeans and a shirt, the jeans cost $6 more than the shirt. What was the cost of the jeans? Because that's going to be my variable. Write and solve a system of equations. So you could solve it different ways, but we're working on solving a system. So we want to set up two equations. So I know I have jeans, my variable, and shirt. In total, is jeans plus shirt equals 64. But then the jeans cost $6 more than the shirt. So that means jeans have to be $6 plus the cost of the shirt. So here are my two equations. So I'm going to solve by a substitution. So it's going to be 6 plus s plus s equals 64. So 6 plus 2s equals 64. 2s equals 58. So the shirt costs... shirt costs $29, which makes the jeans $5. And then number six, the perfect brownie recipe has 30% of the batter cocoa. So cocoa is 30% of the batter. Mrs. Fields has a batter comprised of 40% cocoa, and Hershey's has a batter made out of 25% cocoa. If Mrs. Thielen wants to make the perfect batch of brownies, write and solve a system to find the number of cups she needs of batter if she wants, or if she needs of each batter, if she wants seven cups of batter. So this is a mixture problem where you want to compare the amount of batter that we need, so amount of, of each batter. So I'm going to let F be Fields and H be Hershey's batter. So if I know I want seven cups, I know that Hershey's plus Fields equals seven cups of batter. And then I have a percent that's relating the cocoa. I need to have an equation that's relating the cocoa. So I know that I want Mrs. Fields is 40% cocoa and Hershey's is 25% cocoa. So 0.25H plus Mrs. Fields is 40% cocoa equals how much cocoa do I have in seven cups of batter? Well, I want, or how much do I want? I want 30% of it to be cocoa, so I'm going to take 0.3 and multiply it by 7. So now you're solving this system of equation, and you can either do it by substitution or elimination. And then the last part, make sure you can write and graph inequalities. 
So this one's kind of hard to see, but I have the x axis right here and the or the y axis and the x axis. So one thing I noticed is that this blue line is a solid line and it's a horizontal line in the shade in your shading above. So it's going to be y is greater than or equal to um this is going up by 2, so it's greater than or equal to negative 2. And then I also have this blue line right here, or this line right here, that's up and down, so it's going to be X, and I'm shading to the left, so it's going to be X is less than or equal to, because it's a solid line, and this number is between 2 and 4, so it's 3. And then I have this line, and it's shaded above the line, and it's a solid line, so it's y is greater than or equal to, and my slope is up to right 2 or up 1, right 1, so my slope is 1x, and I'm starting at the y-intercept is 0. So here's my system. It's actually three different equations for this one. And then the last part, these are solid lines too. So I have, the, let's do the red line. So the red, you're shading underneath the line, and it's a solid line, so it's y is less than or equal to. The slope is 3 halves, and the y-intercept is 2. And then the blue line, the slope is 4, so I can't see the y-intercept, but if I went down 4, right 1, the y-intercept would be at negative 3, and I'm shading above the line, and it's a solid line, so it's 4x minus 3.